Hey, listen up, smarty pants. You hear that? I'm at the beach waiting for my friend. But not just any friend. A zoologist. Which means she studies animals. She always has really cool stuff to show me. Here she comes now. Hey. Hey, you ready to go to school? School? I already graduated. And secondly, you're wearing flippers and a wetsuit? Correction. We're going to see a school of clownfish. Ooh, clownfish. Like Finding Nemo. Sounds fun. It is, but it's also a little sad. They're having a funeral today. Oh no. Who died? The queen. I'm sorry. Give my condolences to the king. That's the thing. There is no king. Clownfish are ruled by a female queen. Oh, so I guess they'll just choose a new queen. Well, that's the interesting part. All clownfish are born as male. Oh, so how will they get a new queen? Easy. One of the male fish will just become female. Say what now? That's right. Some animals can change from male to female or female to male. It's called sex reversal. I did not know this. Hey, Smarty Pants, did you know this? If you did, you're smarter than I am. Of course, now I need to know what animals can change from boys to girls or girls to boys. Why do they do it? And is it something they've always done? Or have they evolved to do it because of changes in the environment? It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone, we make smarting lots of fun on Who's Smarted? Okay, my wetsuit is on. Great. Put on this old-school diving helmet so we can talk to each other under the water. Great. Let's head to the ocean. Look over there. A giant school of clownfish. I see him. Oh, look. One is swimming over to us. Hi there. You two here for the funeral? Thanks so much for coming. Of course. I wouldn't miss it. Queen Glenda was a clownfish legend. She really was. This is my friend, um, narrator. He's curious about how Glenda's replacement is getting ready to leave the school. Nice to meet you. I'll explain it to you. Clownfish, or Amphiprionini, which is our scientific name. Fancy. Ain't it? Anywho, clownfish live in groups called schools, and only two fish in the whole group have babies. A male and a female. They're the breeding pair. The female is the largest fish in the whole school, and then she picks whatever male is biggest, but not as big as she is, to be her mate. So the girls are bigger than boys in clownfish. Yup. And then the female dies. Her boyfriend turns into a female. That's because every one of us is born as a male. That's what my friend here was saying. So can all male clownfish turn female? Most of us will stay the way we're born, male. But a lucky few will be chosen for the honor of changing. Once we switch, we can never switch back. Ah... The new head female picks the next biggest male, and together, they rule the land. I mean water. That's wild. It really is. I mean, it's something that happens in the wild, so it's wild. But you might be surprised to know it's not that uncommon. It's called sequential hermaphroditism. Whoa, big word time. It just means you change from male to female, or female to male, at some point in your life. Ah. You start out as one, and then you become another. More specifically, if an animal changes from male to female, it's called prodendry. And if it changes from female to male, it's called protogeny. So many words, my brain's a spinning. Kids, what are some big science words you know? Uh Uh-huh. Wow, holy cow, so many big words. So, you said it's not that uncommon. So who else does it? Well, it's actually a pretty long list. Mostly fish and sea creatures. For example, fish like red groupers, swamp eels, and parrotfish. Wow, that's a lot. And starfish, 
Harlequin Sand Smelt, Orange Sea Perch, Black Porgy, Striped Sea Beam, eh, you got your Common Snook, your Flathead, your Redhead Goby, your Hamlet. To be or not to be. That's a lot of fish. Also sea worms, known as polychaete worms. Sea worms? Blech. Don't judge. Polychaete worms have feelings too, you know. Or at least they have sensation. But guess what? It's not just underwater creatures. <gasps> Ducks have been known to switch over too. Wow, I had no idea so many animals change sexes. But the big question I have is, why? What do all you listening think? Do you think animals change sex because A. Girls have more fun <laughs> B. Boys get more attention Hey. C. It's their true identity Or D. In order to ensure the survival of their species Hmm. If you said D. To ensure the survival of the species You're right Exactly Take for instance a species that starts running low on males in the population Well... Thanks to sequential hermaphroditism, they can just make more. It's raining men! Same goes if there aren't enough females. I am woman! So when an animal changes sex, are there any physical differences besides the obvious? Sure. Take the giant fish known as the humphead wrasse. Humphead? I know, funny name funny-looking fish. Once it's about nine years old, it can change from female to male. And when it changes sex, it changes color, too. No way! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes way! When us humpheads are female, we're like a reddish-orange. And then when we become males, we turn a blue-green. Humphead, out. So much for ending the pink is for girls, blue is for boys stereotype. Well, that's just one example. In fact, once we get back to land, I can show you more examples of this animal sex change business. Great. So long, clownfish. Nice meeting you. Who are you? Do I know you? Oh, I forgot. Clownfish have short memories. What? No, we don't. That's just a myth. Oh, oops. Sorry, you're not the clownfish I was talking to before. There he is. Oh, hey. Are you guys leaving? Yeah, we're going to go learn more about animals that change sexes. Oh, nice! Come back anytime. Ah, back on dry land. So what other creatures change sex? Well, for starters, some amphibians do. Amphibians? Cold-blooded animals that can breathe on water or land, like frogs or salamanders. Some corals can change. Wait, aren't corals plants? Nope. Corals might look like plants, but they're animals because they don't make their own food the way plants do. Let's see, the bearded dragon might change from male to female when it's still inside an egg if it gets too warm outside. And as adults, male to female bearded dragons tend to lay way more eggs than bearded dragons who started out female. Like twice as many. I was just born. I'm a bearded dragon. Hello. That's wild. Yes, it's definitely a thing that happens in the wild. Except it's been happening to bearded dragons more and more. Oh, yeah? What does that mean? It means sometimes animal sex changes are completely natural. The animals are supposed to change. They're wired that way. But sometimes it means something's not quite right with their environment. Whoa, that sounds a little scary. And we'll hear all about it right after this quick break. Now back to who smarted. So let me see if I understand. You said sometimes animals change sex because it's a normal, natural thing for them to do, like with our friends the clownfish. But other times, animals might change sex because there's a problem with the environment. Oh, no! Are you talking about the double C words? Yes, climate change. Ah. Many scientists think bearded dragons are changing from male to female so often because of the rise in temperatures all over the world. Like I said, the eggs change when it gets warm. And because it's getting warmer, bearded dragons are changing sex a lot more often. Same goes with some corals due to rising ocean temperatures. So what happens exactly? 
When the environment gets too warm, whether in the water or the air or inside an egg, it can cause these chemicals in the body to release, called hormones. So even if the bearded dragon or the duck or the fish was supposed to be male or female, it will look and act like the other type because of the changing temperature caused different hormones to be released. Ah. It's not fully one sex or the other. That's wild. Well, not really. More like man-made. Right, right. And climate change affects lots of other animals, even if it doesn't cause sex reversal. Huh? Polar bears are running out of ice. (sighs) Monarch butterflies are having trouble finding milkweed to munch on. Rising sand temperatures are making life tough for giant sea turtles. One million species of animals and plants are at risk of extinction. Wow, this is too sad. We started out with a clownfish funeral... And now we're talking extinct polar bears. I can't take it. I know. Climate change is pretty serious. And it can be sad. But there is good news and hope. If we all work together to solve climate change, we can save endangered animals. And we can appreciate the creatures who are still doing great. Like, you know, our buddies, the clownfish. Oh, good. Should we go back and see how the funeral is going? Actually, it's not a funeral anymore. Now it's a birthday party. A birthday party? For who? For the new female clownfish leader, who used to be a male but is now female, and a queen. See? It went from a sad day to a happy day. Should we go back in the ocean and check it out? Uh, no, I I don't think I can go. Why? A little too weird for you? What? No, not at all. I just can't go to a birthday party without a present. Why do you even get a clownfish queen? This episode, Can Animals Change Sex? was written by Lisa Selen Davis and voiced by Jenna Hoban, Brandon Bayliss, Mark Shahem, Max Kamaski, and Jerry Colbert. Additional voices, technical direction, and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez. Lyrics are written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production.